Okay, yeah, I'm starting the recording because Juju and I are having a conversation about submitting work and there could be many other people that benefit from this. So um, if you go to your Blackboard here, let me escape out of here. Then I should st still be logged into Blackboard here. Um, when you go to your individual assignments, like here's your homework assignments, which we're doing today. Um, when you go to chapter 16, you don't have to type stuff in. Yeah, there's our text submission box, but instead you can just click browse your computer and you can upload your JPEG there. So Juju, you don't need to format it. You can just click and up, just, he, can I tell you what I would do, Juju? I would just write it all down on a, on a dumb notebook, like a piece of yeah. paper. And yeah. then I would just snap a photo and upload it to there. I couldn't get any. So that's, that's, what I was, that's what I was wondering. I was, I was thinking the same thing. I, I was just confused. So I take a picture, add it to a PDF, and then just, just submit it. You can even send me the JPEG. You don't have, you don't have to add to a P You don't have to convert it. So just send you the photo itself. Just send you yes, the send me the bloody photo. I can see JPEGs. <laughs> but do not send me a .heic like Marcus does. Make sure if you have a fancy new iPhone, that you choose your camera settings to most compatible format. I can read JPEGs. Oh, I have an old iPhone, so it shouldn't matter. Yeah, I have an old iPhone too, so mine just naturally does JPEGs. Yeah. So that should work. What iPhone do you have though? Uh, I've got the 5C, it's a little, I like the little one. Oh, I got the six, is that too advanced? I don't know, I think it's a, well. Come I, on, that seven. If you just get an Android, you don't have to worry about this. No, you, you know better what? not do it. No, no. Get rid of it. Oh, oh, sorry, so you're no. I'll owe you guys if you get an Android. Like yesterday, I'm gonna gonna fail you eventually for that. Especially you, professor. You guys are a blast. I tell you what, I don't like waking up, but once I'm hanging out talking to you guys, I have a really good time. This is fun. Um. So I, I feel we have to kind of get to it because today's homework has got a couple of whoppers in it. I'll try to minimize the <laughs> vicious nature of it all, but we got a couple of hard ones to do. Uh, I'm ready to get going if y'all ready to get going. Oh, do I like your coffee cup. Oh, the mustache. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> me You're welcome. Coffee. Writing in this one. Yeah, so Juju, just write down whatever we do like by hand and then take a picture and send it in. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Some of you are sending me like the labs, but not the homeworks. You got to keep up with both. You know that, right? I know it's a lot of work watching these shows, but, but watch them and do them. Yeah. I get one lab a week and I get one homework for, for a week. That's what you owe me, okay? <coughs> okay. Gesundheit. Bless so, you. Uh, unless anyone has any objection. Hey, Julio, what's your dog's name? Elliot. Oh, that's right. Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> hey, guys, I say we get going, all right? Uh, let me grab my book. Can you guys queue up the numbers for me? And it actually helps if someone will do some reading as well. Yeah, it's um, page 534. Uh, starts with 50, goes to 52, 53, 55, and 56. Okay, some of these homeworks are going to be explainable in terms of the stuff we've already learned. Some of them are just using the old-fashioned formulas. There is at least one or two problems that use a new formula, but the new formula is really, really simple. The Whoppers actually don't use any special formulas. They just use your mind, and that, those are the hardest problems to do in some sense. Uh, let me find my new marker here. I'm going to go sharpen my pencil real quick. Oh, yeah, sharpen up them pencils. Can you actually hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had a brand spanking new... Oh, here we go. I think that's it. All right. Let me erase my HR diagram. Hey, Riker, have you got the problems as well? Yeah. Um. Why don't you help me by, uh, what's our first number? 50. What's the title? Oh, hold on, let me get myself in focus here. This stupid camera. Light from a newborn star cluster. Hold on, Riker, I'm having focus issues. I think it's ADHD. <laughs> I'm hoping if I move around or sometimes if I just, ah, there we go. All right. Light from a newborn star cluster. So light 
from a star. What homework okay, is this? Go ahead. 16. This is homework exactly number 16. eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, put that on your pages, by the way. That's a good thing to point out, Riker. All right. So the question reads, suppose the new star cluster is born with one O star, 10 A stars, 100 G stars, and 1,000 M stars. Which stellar type dominates the light output from the cluster? There are two questions, right? Yup. And what would the color of the star cluster appear to be if you observed it from a distance so great that you could not make out the individual stars? Okay, so there's two questions that we have to identify there. You know what I think we should do? Hold on, guys. Let's put this all in a table format, okay? We're going to do this in table format, nice and quick. So we have O, uh, A, G, and M. We'll do the number. We'll do the luminosity and then the total luminosity. So this is the number. You guys got that? Who's, who's got the, the background chatter? Wasn't me. That's Sal. I got him. All right. <clears throat> Guess what we're going to use to answer these questions? What tool are we going to use to answer these questions? Menschel analysis. Not exactly. Well, oh, nice try. Where would we get this? Where would we get this information from? The chart. The chart. The HR diagram. Exactly. Let's go look at that. Oh, for, let's write down the numbers first. Sorry, Riker, you said it was one zero, right? Yep. 10A, 10A, 100G, and then 1000M. Thanks. Okay. Let's get the luminosities in solar luminosity units for each of these stars. So let's go to our share screen. I should still have that HR diagram floating around somewhere. Uh, slide 66. Okay. So um, I'm going to use the... Uh, I want to get this out of my face here, the annotate feature. And I'll do a line. I'll do a blue line to start. Okay, what would you guys say is sort of like the typical uh, luminosity of an O star? Typical luminosity? Yeah. Uh, 10 to the power of 6. Yeah, okay, fine. 10 to the power of six, I like it. Let's put units there too. One million solar luminosity units, okay? How about uh, a typical A-type star? So here's an A. 10 to the power of two. 10 to the two. Yeah, okay. I'll buy that. 10 to the power of two. 10. I think Sirius is like 25. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like it. I like it.
How about a G type star? We don't have to look that one up because G is the same as the sun, right? Yeah, it's one. One, so luminosity. How about an N type star? Oh, uh, we can't see this. Here we go. It's swapping over. Oh, uh, like 10 to the negative two. Yeah. Honestly, I'd say even yeah. 10 to the minus three for Proxima Centauri, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. All right. 10 to the minus three. All right. We know what to do now to get the total luminosity, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Um, there's one side. No tricks, guys. This should be simple. Multiplication okay. of blood. Yeah. So here we have one times 10 to the six luminosities. This is 10 to the three, right? Thousand solar luminosities. Uh, this is a hundred. So luminosities. What does the M one come out to be? Oh, uh, nope. 100. Oh, oh, M. Sorry. Is it just one? Yeah. This is 10 to the three, this is 10 to the minus three, that's one solar luminosity. What have we learned? What have we learned? Star dominates the light output. What star? The O star. Oh, yes. The O star. The overall color would be what? Blue. What would the color be? Blue? Blue. Yes. Think about that, guys. Of all those stars, that is 1,111 stars, and the one O star outshines all of them. One O star can outshine all of the other stars in that cluster. This is one of the reasons that when you look at stars on your nighttime sky, the vast majority of them are blue. Blue stars just kick the shit out of every other kind of star in terms of light output. Get wrecked other stars. Exactly. Okay. Give you a moment to finish that up. Let me look at all my peoples here and see how we're doing. I'm just looking for people who are still working. Uh, you all look pretty good. Jenny, how you doing? Oh, Jenny's sipping. All right. Thanks. How about uh, trolls? Are you guys good too? Yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm good. All right. I'm going to race this and we'll move right along. Uh, I'm still writing. Oh, okay, sure. How's the raccoon doing? <laughs> oh, doing great. I fed him some roasted chicken the other day. Actually, the raccoon's kind of bumming right now because there's currently like National Grid has all these workers outside my apartment and they basically chopped into this old historical part of the street that had these beautiful cobblestones and the street is all torn up so they can fix a gas leak. Uh, right. Professor, can you... All can their you trucks are parked right outside of the raccoon den. Professor, can sure. you move to the side? I can't read. <laughs> and I was worried, but I fed him. So, oh, you got to see how big he is now. He's huge. He's so huge. I told you, you guys are going to make him fat. He's not going to be able to get out of there. <laughs> no, wait, you can't even understand how, uh, how big he is. Hold on, let me. 
I saw one of the videos where he like kind of came out halfway, and I was like, he's stuck. Oh yeah, he's so huge now. Oh, so you saw that one? <laughs> Hey, are you guys done copying this or what? Almost. So I'm watching Star Wars. All right, all set. All right, cool. Someone's watching Star Wars while we learn about stars. I don't know. That sounds kind of crazy to me. <laughs> Okay, Riker, what's our next problem? Uh, water and molecular clouds. All right, this is one of the whoppers. Here we go. So, uh, wait, what number? Riker, the number of the problem? 52. And some kind of numbers. <laughs> 24. <laughs> a molecular cloud is basically a big gas cloud in space. Um, let's draw the picture of our molecular cloud here. Here's a giant molecular cloud, and it's got some hydrogen atoms in it. And occasionally it's got some water molecules, which as you know are H2O. Okay. Read it up for us, Riker. Uh, the water molecules now in your body were once part of a molecular cloud. Only about one millionth of the mass of a molecular cloud is in the form of water molecules. And the mass density of such a cloud is roughly 10, 10 to the negative 21st power grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, hold on a second. The mass density is 10 to the minus 21? Yep. And what were the units? Grams per centimeter cubed. Okay. Estimate the volume of a piece of molecular cloud that has the same amount of water as your body. How does this volume compare with the volume of the entire Earth? Um, and then compare to Earth. It's our bodies, what fraction of our bodies do you think is made up of water? 70%. 70%. Okay. So 70% of your mass is the mass uh, of H2O in your body, right? Yep. So yep. let's take it. So it, your, your number of kilograms is approximately half your weight, right? All right. So, uh, if, geez, what do I weigh these days? 190 pounds, 200 pounds, maybe uh -huh. 80, a standard person might be 80 or 90 kilograms, right? Probably around there. Yeah, I'm about 90. You're 90 kilograms? Yeah. All right, so let's do about. That. Okay. So 70% times 90 kilograms is the mass of water in a single person. What do you get there? Punch them up. What's seven times nine? 63? Okay, I'm not 90 kilograms. Seven huh? times nine is 63. So six point, six point. Wait, hold on. What did you, did you, are you changing your estimate, Michael? Uh, I, no, I checked, I'm not that heavy, but let's just roll with it. Okay, sure. So that's, is that 63 then? 63. Kilograms. So that's the mass of water in a typical person, okay? Um, did you guys understand why I wrote 10 to the minus six times the mass of a cloud? Why 10 to the minus six? Oh, because there's only um, only about one millionth of the mass is water. Yeah, and since 10 to the power of 6 is million, 1 over 10 to the 6 is a millionth, and that's 10 to the minus 6, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. So we would need a cloud massive enough 
So that one millionth of it is equal to your 63 kilograms. Y'all following me? Mm -hmm. This would be a hard problem if I wasn't your tour guide, but I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So I think if I'm doing this right, I'd say that my cloud needs to have a mass such that one millionth of the mass of the cloud is equal to the mass of the water, pretty sure this tops it. which is 63 kilograms for someone like Michael. No, because I've heard- no, I'm gonna do some time. algebra and flip this around. That then means that the mass of my cloud needs to be 63 times 10 to the six kilograms. Y'all follow my moves there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What should I do next? What am I trying to find? Help me. What? Hey, uh, wait, I got a little background chatter here. Watch your chatter. It says, uh, estimate the volume of a piece of molecular cloud that has the same amount of water as your body. Okay, so what do I do then, Riker or friends? Any, anyone know what I should do next? All right. I'm a little worried that you guys didn't get as much sleep as me last night. Uh, accurate. I have the mass of a cloud. I need to figure out what the volume of a cloud is whose mass is 63 million kilograms. What other information was I given? Well, the cloud has the same amount. The volume of piece. How am I supposed to get volume from mass? They gave us a density as well. Uh, d divide density by mass. Yeah, do you guys know what the formula is for density? What's the formula for density? Let's write that over here. Density equals density. mass times volume. Times volume? Divided by. Mass Thank divided you. by volume. Oh, Thank you. Density That's true. is mass divided by volume. Now, suppose we rearrange that. That would mean then that volume is equal to mass divided by density, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the volume of our cloud then should be 63 million kilograms divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 21 grams per cubic centimeter. Is that cool? Yep. All right, so then what? Uh, do we have to convert the kilograms into grams? Yes, we do. I was waiting to see if you'd notice that. So let's put in a division bar up top. What's your conversion? Uh, kilograms on a, bottom. Yep. Yeah. A, th a thousand grams on top. A thousand grams per kilogram. Okay, do you guys want to punch all that up? No, I just want to change the six to a nine. Okay, but yeah, actually, I want to do that too. so change the six to a nine, but then what are you going to do about the 10 to the minus 21? That's going to stay the same. No, you add 21 powers to it, right? If you divide by negative 21, that's, you don't need a calculator for this. Let's work through this. Six plus three zeros gives us what? <coughs> nine. Uh, six plus three, 6,000. Nine plus 21 gives us what? Negative. No. No. 30. Nine plus 21 is 30. So that's 63 times 10 to the 30, right? What are my units? Yeah. Grams per cubic meter. False. No, the grams cancel out. It's centimeters cubed. It's just centimeters cubed. Yeah, because it's one over one over centimeters cubed. It's a volume. I'll say, yeah, it's volume. That's our answer. No, it's fine. Now we got to compare this to Earth, right? 
Yeah. All right, up here, I'm going to do that. Earth is a sphere. Do we know the volume of a sphere? It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. The radius of Earth is 6,400 kilometers. But I need to convert that to centimeters so I can compare cubic centimeters to cubic centimeters. What's my conversion factors? You're going from kilometers to centimeters. So you want to go from kilometers to meters and then meters to centimeters. OK, give me my factors. So a kilometer is 1,000 meters. And then a, then a meter is 100 centimeters. All right, do it all in your head. 6.4 times 10 to the what? Eight. One times, uh, it's 10 to the eight, yeah. All right, now let's calculate the volume of Earth in cubic centimeters. The volume of Earth is 4 thirds pi, 6.4 times 10 to the 8 centimeters cubed. You'll have to punch that one up for me. I'm still writing it down. It's okay, we can take it slow, but the slower you go, the longer it is until cocktail hour. Did you guys notice the better lighting on my board today? Does it seem easier? Uh, you mentioned it at the beginning no, of class. Isn't it because it's raining? Well, actually, that helps the darkness outside. That does help. But I thought I, I just adjusted some lights in here, and I thought it on my screen. I thought it looked better when it's in focus. Hmm. Well, that's the issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's not enough light in my room. Yeah, why don't you shine some light in your life? It's, it's just so terribly lonely. <laughs> I felt that. 2.9 times 10 to the ninth. Okay. Hold on, wait. Let me go we back to 1.1 times 10 to the 27th. All right, we got a contest here. Who's right? 29 or 27? Hope 27. I got 27. All right, give me the final answer then. One more time. 1.1 times 10 to the 27. Units? Centimeters cubed. All right, now let's compare by division. The volume I got it right. of the cloud. I still got the touch, baby. Divided by the volume of Earth is 63 times 10 to the 30. Let's just use. All right, fine. 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the 27 cubic centimeters. And round hard, what do you get? <clears throat> Two sig figs. Round hard? We get 60,000, right? That's three zeros. Yeah. Right? 60,000 times. Greater. So in other words, just to make enough water to squeeze into one human, you would have to slurp yeah. up a volume of gas, 60,000 Earths worth of volume to get that. And I'm feeling pretty thirsty, guys. <laughs> I might need two clouds. You might need two clouds. You might need 120,000 Earths. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, that was I'm mighty part. Did that pretty quick, actually. 
The next one's a little worse, I think. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Some, is it the dust grain? Is the next problem the dust grain? Because that one's nuts. Uh, interstellar dust grains. Oh, boy. Oh. Hang on to your hats, guys. Interstellar dust grains go and kick your butt. <laughs> Wait, let me get a hat. <laughs> My hats are upstairs. <laughs> Um, it looks like a few people are still writing, so I'm just giving everyone a moment here. I know that's writing intensive. Do we box the 60,000 times greater than Earth? <laughs> yeah, Bella, why not? It's hard to feel thug with a Nintendo Switch hat. <laughs> Wait, where are you? Let me see your stupid little hat. <laughs> oh, nice. You're cool, man. You're wicked cool. Damn Skippy. All right, so no man's guy? Did he say stupid little hat? Yes. No, I didn't say that. That's, that's <laughs> rough. That. I'm going to scrub that out the recording later so no one will know that I antagonize my students. Well, what, what you should do is cut out the part of you saying that, but not cut out the part of me questioning it, because then it just looks like I'm insane. Or <laughs> That's not. And then a... also cut out that word that I just said. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, honestly. <clears throat> um, does anyone object to me erasing, or are we still writing? Here comes the eraser. Taking pictures and printing it as we speak. If anybody needs it, I've got the picture. I can send it to you on Discord. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to have a talk right now. Is Raf here? Where are you, Raf? Raf's here. Raf, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Listen. Yeah. Not one of you, but two of you attempted to submit homework by taking a screenshot of my writing on the board and submit that was it. Like Fuck no. Okay, like that. <laughs> I am totally fine with you copying in your own handwriting. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I know this snapshot that. of my board and then resubmit <laughs> it to me. Okay. Damn, that means like bro, I put that on everything. I love. I did not do that. Wild. I did not totally do did that. that. Totally. Oh, that's I know what my board and my handwriting look like. <laughs> You at least have to, I, I believe, okay, hold on, I'm trying to be serious here. I believe there's some value no, to writing it down with your hand. I think you learn it the way you learn through an apprentice, by imitation. So I think there's something important to what we're doing here, but you can't, you've got to at least write it down. That's not asking is too much. Okay, so Raph, you're going to have to read last week's work. I, I don't even know if I submitted that. I, I thought it was Raph who did that, but I could be wrong. One of you did that. Wow. Yeah, I've never done that before. Okay, Raph, I might be picking on you unfairly, but somebody out there did that, and that's not okay. I want to put the kibosh on that right away. Okay. Who's that in the background? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Who's, where's the chatter? Do they want to take our astronomy class? <laughs> Oh, hey guys, I should tell you something. I got Zoom bombed yesterday. Oh. I actually, <laughs> I did too in, in another one oh, of my classes. Oh, really? You posted like the bombs? Yeah. Some guy with a weird name I'm not going to mention joined and called the teacher a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> my guy was pretty bad, but he, he, asked, he asked me if we had sent a probe to Uranus. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> had we? Great one. You are the most original <laughs> Zoom bomber of all time. But honestly, I kind of liked it. I thought it was funny. It, it added a little drama to the day. <clears throat> oh, um, also, under advice from my buddy Zaz, I'm thinking about switching to a different platform called uh, Jitsu or Jitsi. Jitsi is kind of cool because it's a video chatting service that's open source, and they don't steal all your data like Zoom does. So far, Wait, I've what? tested it. Uh, Jitsi. I've tested it out, and it's kind of cool. No. But uh, just don't be surprised. They may send you a weird kind of URL. You may have to download Jitsi. Jitsi is safer than Zoom. But right now, Zoom just has all these great features that I like. So I, I'm trying not to get things too complicated here. Anyways, can we, uh, can we erase? I'm erasing.
Hey, wait, what was that bottom part? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Riker, what's the number for the dust grade problem? Number 53. Um, in our next week's class, I'm going to make a huge big deal about dust, what's called cosmic nano dust, little tiny flecks of carbon soot that are sprinkled throughout uh, interstellar gas clouds. They're what create those cool, dark looking clouds that you see when you look at pictures of space. Like for instance, uh, oh, this picture here. How are you doing on that flight? This picture of Hubble's greatest hits. All of that cool, dark material that you see there in those clouds, those are all dust grains that are blocking well, the light. To do so dust yeah, grains are what make these pictures of space look so damn cool. Um, let's draw a picture of what's going on here. Let's draw first a cloud, okay? And in the cloud, there are going to be some spherical dust grains. Make them little, little ping pong balls, okay? And we have a photon of gas. I'm sorry, a photon of water <laughs> passing through the gas. So here comes a blue photon. And we're trying to calculate how far the photon can get before it smashes into one of the dust grains and either gets scattered or absorbed. Oh, this one really is a big one. Oh, it's a big one. OK, read us the whole thing, Riker, when you've got your picture drawn. Uh, I'll put it in the screen, and then I'll draw a picture of it afterwards. Um, Dark interstellar gas clouds contain so many dust grains that starlight cannot pass through. Even though the dust grains are tiny and the spaces between them are quite large by earthy st earthly standards, a typical dust grain has a radius of about 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, hold on. Riker, slow down because you're kind of phase you're glitching on me. Um, you're talking about the grain for starters, right? Yes. And the grain has, let's use little r, use little r for the radius of the grain. What's, is it 10 to the minus 7 meters? 10 to the minus 7 meters. Okay, keep going. And a mass of about 10 to the negative 14 grams. Okay, keep going. Uh, part A. Estimate how many dust particles there are in a cloud containing... A thousand, ma a, ta a thousand, a thousand masses of the sun, Hold of on. dusty gas. Riker, say it this way: a thousand solar masses. Okay, a thousand solar masses of dusty gas. If one percent of the cloud's mass is in the form of dust grains. All right. So the mass of the dust is a mere one percent of the mass of the cloud. And we're trying to get what again? What are we trying to solve for? Uh, if 1% of the cloud's mass is in the form of dust grains. We want to find the number of grains, you mean. The yeah. raw number of grains. <laughs> right? Yep. How do we do it? What's the answer? Seven. What do I do? Multiply the percentage by the mass. The mass of what? Mass of the cloud. All right, I like that. What do you get? Uh, 10. 10 solar masses. Now what do I do? How do I find the number of grains? 
10 solar masses times 10 to the negative 14 grams? No, 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 no. It's different. The number of grains. Okay, look at it this way. Suppose each grain was one kilogram, right? And suppose I had 50 kilograms worth of cloud. Then I would have 50 grains. Does that make sense? Mm. You have to divide the mass of the total cloud by the mass of each little grain. The number of grains is the total mass of the dust divided by the mass of a single grain. In other words, it's 10 solar masses divided by, not multiplied, but divided by 10 to the minus 14 grams. That requires us to know the mass of the sun in grams. What's the mass of the sun? Two times 10 to the 30th kilograms. How do I convert that to grams? Because I got grams here. Dimensional analysis. Hell yes, Marcus. How many yeah. grams are there in a kilogram? There are a thousand grams in a kilogram. Leading us to how many zeros? 33. Oh, oh, oh. Remember that. The number of grains is thus, oh, 10 times 2 times 10 to the 33 grams. Can we do this in our heads? Do the final answer without using a calculator. What is it? You can do that without a calculator. 20. 20. What's 10 times 33? 330. 330. No. Huh? You said 10 times 33. Yeah. 10 times 2 is 20. All right. No. What, what is 10 times 10 to the 33? 10 to the 34. 10 to the 34. What's 34 plus 14? It's 2 10 to times 48. 48. What are the units? What units? Exactly. Gram. Grams cancel. It's a fake unit called grains. It's a dummy unit. It's Whoa. not actually any unit at all. Wait, is it 48? Yeah, can I walk you through that again, Sal? Yeah. 10 to the power of 33. Add one zero. 10 to yeah, the but, power of 34. Yeah. Add 14 zeros. Oh, we add 14, not subtract. Well, because it's divided by subtract, which is add, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, like, dude, 1 over 10 to the minus 2 is 10 to the 2. That's how algebra works. Or that's how numbers work. <laughs> All right, box that. That's part A. Let me know when you're ready to move on. Hold up. What does that say in the box? Grains or grands? Grains. Grains. Gotcha. Grand. <laughs> the grams cancel out. I see some grand. Yeah, it looks like grands. Okay. It's 10 to the 48 grand. grands. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to the 48 grands. Grands. <laughs> it's hard to write neatly when you're when you're on your knees. It's all good. Okay, I want to erase. Yeah, go for it.
Riker, Part B. Estimate the total surface area of these grain. Estimate the total surface area of these grains would cover if you put them side by side. You can assume that the grains are approximately spherical, so each grain covers an area of pi r squared, where r is the grain's radius. State your answer in square light years. Okay. Let's imagine that a grain is a little tiny sphere. Now, the surface area of a sphere might be 4 pi r squared, but a dust grain does not see the total surface area as, as a three-dimensional thing. For a photon, the grain is a little target. It's a disk. So the grain can only hit the disk forward on. So instead of seeing a full three-dimensional sphere, you're just seeing it as a little flat target like this. This is basically what a grain looks like to a photon. It looks like a little disk that it's going to hit. And the surface area of a disk is pi times the little radius squared. That's the disk area. But remember, we're going to be making a kind of chain mail out of all these dust grains. We're going to put all the dust grains together like chain mail. And so what we want to do is we want to multiply the total number of grains by the surface area of one of these little grains. Hold on, I don't like the way my circles look here. So all the dust grains together are going to look like this, right? I don't know if I like those circles either. So the area of all the grains, the area of all the grains is the total number of grains times the area of one of the grains, or n times pi little r squared. And that means 2 times 10 to the 48 grains times pi times 10 to the minus 14 grams. Wait a minute. Sorry. The radius, right? Yep, 10 to the negative 7 meters. OK. Now, if I square 10 to the minus 7, what do I get? What's 7 times 2? You mean 7 times 7? Uh, no, I mean 7 times 2, right? 14. And if it's 7 times 7, it's 49. 2 times pi times 10 to the 48 minus 14, right? Is that what we have? Which is approximately 6 times 10 to the, let's see, 38, 34? Does that sound about right? Someone want to check me? Check my math? All right, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 34, whatever. What are my units? Uh, that's what was it? Square, no, no. In square light years. No, what that's not what we calculated. Meters. Oh, it's meters? Not meters. Meters squared. Meters squared. OK, we got to convert square meters to square light years. Do you guys know how to do this? What do I do? First go from meters to kilometers. How about we go right from meters to light years? What's one light year? It's 9.5 times 10 to the 15 meters per light year. But hold on a second. This is area. We can't just simply do this. We have to convert areas. 
Now, I, look. How many centimeters are in a meter? A hundred. Right. How many square centimeters are in a square meter? So would it be? 10,000. Oh, uh, right. 9.5 times 10 to the 15 square, that would be the amount of square meters in one square light year. Beautiful. Yeah. Who said that? Nathan. Marcus. And you are no, Jason, Nathan. my friend. That's exactly right. So you have to square Graph the units left. and you have to square the conversion factors. One squared is just one, so that's not a big issue. But here, let me show how to type this in. Let's do, remember when I used to have dot cam? I loved dot cam. Okay. Uh, 6.3 EXP 34 minus divided by 9.5 EXP 12 square key equals. All right, wait, I screwed something up, guys. What am I screwing? What am I doing wrong? Oh, it's not negative 34. Ugh. It's positive 34. Why didn't anyone call me on that? It's positive 34. Why wait, would you do wait. that? Welcome. All right, what do you guys get? Round to one sig fig. Not enough light in my room for my calculator. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is so sad. What'd you get? Seven times 10 to the ninth. Nope. That ain't right. And it just got enough light. Is it 700? Yeah, there you go, Tim. What are the units? Meter squared? No, no, no. Look. Oh, uh, greens? Light years squared. Here's light years squared. That's kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah. Because the sun isn't that big. No, there are more dust grains edge to edge than the surface area of the sun. So wouldn't that be 490,000 light years if it's squared? Uh, no, no, the 700 is the square light year. If you want to know the length of the box, take the square root of 700. 700 square root thereof means it's a box that's 26 by 26 light years. 26 light years long and 26 light years tall. Remember, a floor plan of 10 by 10 is 100 square feet, right? So the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 700 gives you the length of a box, which is 26 light years. Wild. Okay, that was part B. Now we have the number of grain, the area of the grains in part C, we're going to get the area of the cloud itself by chopping through the cloud and treating the cloud as a giant ass disk. Okay? So I want to erase. Does anyone object? Go for it. <clears throat> Riker, when you're ready, part C. Estimate the total surface area the cloud covers assuming that its matter density is like that of a typical molecular cloud, about 10 to the negative 20 per 21 grams per centimeter cubed. Hint, first calculate the cloud's volume from its mass and density, then determine the cloud's radius using the formula for the radius of a sphere. R equals three times the volume divided by four pi to the power of a third. State your answer in square light years. Okay, so the cloud is 10 to the minus 21 grams per cubic centimeter. We know from our previous question, they suggest that the volume is the mass divided by the density. Now, the mass of our cloud 
Was it a thousand solar mass units? Yes. Okay. Over 10 to the minus 21 grams per cubic centimeter. But do you guys remember we converted the mass of the sun into grams already? It was a thousand times two times 10 to the 33 grams, all over 10 to the minus 21 grams per cubic centimeter. Can you guys do that in your head now? Are you good enough to do this in your head? Uh, wouldn't it just be two times 10 to the 33rd grams because it it's two times 10 to the 30 uh, kilograms? No, no, I mean this part here, 33,321. Uh, Right, so that makes it two times ten to the hang on fifty-seven. Very good. What about hey. you? Grains? No. Uh... Is oh yeah, centimeters cube. Good. Now look. Hey. Here's the issue. If the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, I can do some algebra to calculate the radius of my cloud. The radius of the cloud will be the cubed root of 3 times the volume divided by 4 pi. Sorry, I'm kind of fast at algebra. So we ought to plug the volume into that. That'll give us the radius of the cloud. So square root of three times, two times 10 to the 57 centimeters cubed divided by four divided by, oh, that's the cubed root, sorry. Can you guys handle that shit? Punch it up, tell me what you get. That's your job. Especially because I can't find my cal. Oh, here it is. I'll fact check you. Oh, that's not right. Two sig bigs. Seven point eight times ten to the eighteenth. Fine. Answer of units. That should be in centimeters. Let's convert that to light years now. We'll convert to meters and then we'll convert to light years. Is there a part D to this problem? Yep. Uh. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> that was such an evil laugh. Uh, you mixed your units up. That should be, yep, that should be CM. Thanks, dude. Got him, Riker. Good job. Yeah, yeah. God, Brendan is more like it. Okay, what's our conversion factors? Uh, should be a hun uh, 100 centimeters on the bottom, one meter on top, 9.5 times 10 to the 15 on the bottom. Very good. Meter. Sorry, I'm getting kind of small here. Can you guys read that? That's yeah. Uh, that's uh hard. the bottom one's kind of rough. Nine point five times ten to the fifteen. Morgan yeah. cannot read it. I'm I'm just running up against this this thing here. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Morgan's mic is also broken. Oh, Morgan can't oh. read it. 
Okay. No, Morgan, I muted you because I was trying to figure out who was creating background chatter. Let me see if I can find Morgan here. Morgan. <laughs> Morgan, try it now. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Morgan. No, Earlier, sound. someone was giving me the chitter chatter, and I was muting random people. So if you can't hear yourself, I might have muted you. Is that a 15? Oh, uh, yes. wait. Five times 10 to the 15. Five times 10 to the, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Wait, can I double check with someone for question A? I wasn't sure if I got all of it. I'm pretty sure I did, but I just wanted someone to double check. Yeah, is that Ellis? Okay. Yeah. Talk to us, Ellis. What did you get? Um, Where are you? I can't see you. I'm showing my notebook. I don't know if oh. you can. Oh, it. there you are. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, hold on. Let me go to speaker view and let me magnify you. Okay. Uh, wait a sec. Where is Ellis here? I think she got it. Okay. Looks good. Yeah, that looks good to me, bud, from what I can tell. Just making sure. Thank you. Mm hmm And, uh, Riker, are you screenshotting any of this? I've been screenshotting the whole way. Great. And are you distroing that? I can Discord it to anybody who needs oh, it. Just, yeah, Discord. Yeah. Whatever the shit you guys do these days, I don't know. That's what the kids are calling it now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what did you get for the radius, guys? We're not quite done yet. Eight light years. Oh. Uh, can I get it to two sig figs for now? 8.2. OK. Now, I'm going to go back up here because I'm kind of running out of real estate, and it's, my handwriting is hard at the bottom there. So it's for real estate. Just this. Um, we've now figured out that the radius of the big cloud is 8.2 light years. Let's treat the cloud like a giant ass disk. The area of a disk is pi times the radius squared or pi times 8.2 light years squared. You can give me this answer to one significant figure. Uh, is it 200? Yep, 200 what? Uh, let's see. Light years? It's an area. S squared? Yes. Yay. Michael, is that greater or less than the area of the total grains? Uh, and I gotta go back. Less. What is it looking for? Hey, Michael, I got a thought question for you. All if right, I have a thought answer. Change within the cloud. How can the area yeah. of the cloud be less than the area of the grains? That seems weird, don't it? Uh, yeah, that is kind of odd. Does anyone understand why that's not why that's okay? How can the area of the grains exceed the area of the cloud? I'm looking around at your faces. I want to see all your stupefied looks. Okay. <laughs> I want to see looks of dumbfoundedness here. How can the area of the grains exceed the area of the clouds? That's area of disk, Bella. Area subscript disk. because they're dense not exactly this is a three-dimensional problem here what's my hint oh what is it michael area is only length and width it doesn't account for height okay make that better for us help us understand talk about this cloud 
Uh, it's not just rounded in a circle. It's also vertically tall. Mm, it's not about... We took a vertical slice through the cloud. Because it's the surface area, not the total area. It's not exactly surface area. When you say surface area, I think of the total area of the bulging protuberant ball. Which this is, is the area of a cross section, a disc like okay, area. Okay, so it's the volume. Would it be like the volume of the circumference of the cloud? Or the, the area, area of the circumference? Is. Look. The dust grains are located forward and backwards. If you press all of the dust grains into a sheet of chain mail, you're going to have a bigger area than the cloud because you're pressing the, all the grains forward and backwards and lining them up in a, in a, in a perfect row of, of, of grains, right? You're kind of doing this with all the grains. Right, you're putting it in one sheet and it's not all... It's not all, it's not uh, all on this line. Some are foreground and some are background. So it's possible if you're talking area to have an area of grains that exceed the cloud because you're, you're taking them all and you're collapsing them onto a single circular disc, right? Right. Okay, now it's time to read part D and be done with this problem. What's part D say? <laughs> uh, based on your answers to parts B and C, what do you think the chances are that a photon passing through the cloud will hit a dust grain? So in part D, we are going to calculate the probability of a photon hitting a grain. Now, I would argue that the probability is the area of the dust or the area of the grains divided by the area of the cloud. That's to say, if the area of the dust was half the area of the cloud, there'd be a 50% chance of it hitting. But here, the area of the dust is 700 square light years divided by 200 squared light years, which is a factor of uh, 3.5. What is the meaning of 3.5? That's like 350%. Chance, and what does that mean? There's it's a 350 percent chance of a photon hitting a grain. Wait, a grain? Dust. A grain? Uh, uh, we'll hit grain. Yeah, it's gonna hit like three and a half grains. It'll hit three to four grains on its journey through the cloud. And in particular, the blue photons scatter more often than the red photons. Sorry, there's a chat coming in. Let's see what that says. Oh, sorry, that was the old chat. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. Oh, hold on, let me screenshot that. Time. That, was a, that was maybe one of the hardest problems in the entire class. There's one other really big whopper, but that was a big whopper. <laughs> I really hope that big whopper is not, not going through the rest of this. No, no, it won't be for a week or two. Oh, wonderful. Yay. <laughs> Something to look forward I think to. I, might be sick that, I think I might be sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to look ahead in the problems if you're looking to be sick that day. <laughs> I could still come to class, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no, useless. Missing no, class. Being a call. I didn't want to click on your YouTube. Oh, page. sorry. I'm sick. I can't go on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know if I'm ever going back to teaching in person again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to learning in person. <laughs> <laughs> Not by choice, though. No reason for snow days anymore. Mm. I know. I don't remember. Yeah, snow no, that's, days. That's, I miss like, snow that's days. What we've from this 
Sorry, right, Mike. So My computer got hit with a snowball. Right. This that, completely gets rid of anybody's learned. excuse for a snow day, ever. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's all we've learned from this, that snow days are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have all this stuff? Oh, my. Hold on one sec. Sure. A few more words. Uh, if anyone was unsure as to how cool I am, I just have a Healy wheel sitting by itself on my desk. <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> uh, uh, the wheel from a Healy. Oh, uh, that I, I never learned how to use, so the wheel just sat on my desk. I never had those. <laughs> if anyone was curious, I'm, I'm that cool. If there's I... a chart, like 1 to 10, I'm somewhere in there. Professor, you're good. Yeah, right. Okay. You guys want to see some mic? I have some fun toys. Check this out. Oh, no. Hourglass with magnetic sand. And this is pretty, this is pretty cool. Have you ever seen this? Yeah. You turn over the hourglass, and as the little iron filings pile up, it would be cool if this would go into focus. I think that's really dope. We can see it pretty good. <laughs> is it actually an hour? I think it's like a minute or so. Well, then it's not it's really an hourglass. Glass. It's a minute glass. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, I, th I like how you and me approach the same thing a different way. I was very pessimistic, and you're just like, oh, it's a minute glass. I'm it's a minute like, glass. It's not real. <laughs> um, can I erase now, everyone? Yeah. 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 All right. No doubt about it. That was a whopper. The, le the last of them aren't so bad, they're simpler. Oh man, don't say whoppers. I'm hungry. <laughs> and I can't go <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, what's the next number? Uh, 55. The title? Masses of the First Stars. Okay, hold on a second. I've got to preamble this. We're going to be using a new formula that's pretty simple called the genes mass formula. The genes mass formula tells us that to form a star, the minimum mass necessary has to be greater than or equal to 18 times the mass of our sun times the square root of the temperature of the gas cubed divided by the number density of the particles. I didn't follow that. <laughs> All right. All right. No, I, I, I understand that. Imagine you have a gas cloud. It's two fundamental properties that we can measure from Earth are the temperature in some number of Kelvin. And instead of measuring the mass density in grams per cubic centimeter, we measure the number density in particles per cubic centimeter. A cubic centimeter is roughly the size, the size of a dice, a single die, I guess. And it's just how many particles are in a little box, one cubic centimeter in volume. For instance, if your density is five particles per cubic centimeter, there's five particles bouncing around in a typical die. Okay, with that, Riker, read us the problem. Okay. Uh, models of the first star forming clouds indicate that they had a temperature of roughly 200 Kelvin and a particle density of roughly 300,000 particles per cubic centimeter at the time they started trapping their internal thermal te energy. Estimate the mass at which thermal pressure balances gravity for these values of pressure and temperature. Uh, how does the, that mass compare with the sun's mass? What is the estimated lifetime of a star with that mass? Okay, let me translate that garbly gook for you. They're just saying, what mass would a cloud need to have for gravity to squish this kind of gas into a star? Oh, wow, did you guys hear thunder? Yeah, I, I'm looking outside, it's a big yeah. old thunderstorm. You guys can hear it from my dog well, again soon. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. in different parts of the state. Come here, baby. I didn't, I didn't hear the thunder, but it is raining. Hmm. Hi, Jack. Did you hear that thunder? Yeah, it's bad out there. It looks really crazy outside right now. 
Anyone near East Providence? Nope. <laughs> Are you an EP? No. Yeah. <laughs> Love EP. Um, I'm actually from Barrington, but you know, oh, okay. I, I, I uh, lied to people. Plug all this stuff in. <laughs> the mass will have to be uh, greater than or equal to 18 solar masses, that's a constant, times the square root of 200 Kelvin cubed divided by 300,000 particles per cubic centimeter. My advice, my calculating friends, first do this part and hit equals, then square root, and then back multiply by a factor of 18. Let's see if you can handle it. No, my calculator's dead. <laughs> what? You, if you have a solar calculator, it never goes dead. It doesn't, not, there's, there's no not sun out. Business. <laughs> Put the yeah. lights on. There isn't enough light in my room. I've been saying this all class. Get a flashlight. Oh. You can get enough light right from your... Uh, right. Your I know, that's what I've been doing. I've been holding it up to my... my my no, baseball like, lamp over here, <laughs> and then I, I I get the juice yeah, I and I juice on that. Anakin, and then I got to read you today. Why don't you tell us? She doesn't like thunder. A number for us? Are you hanging around, Anakin? Yes. Did you get a number? No, I haven't yet. Oh, okay. How about you, Alice? You got a number? Julio, anyone? Yeah. Mind me, please. So you want us to do oh, Mor sorry. Morgan? Did I hear? Oh, sorry, Bella. It's one Bella, second. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, what did you say? Ninety-three. Morgan, you're a damn genius. Oh, I must have somewhere. On oh, square root, idiot, Michael. Damn it! I've been trying to give you airplanes this entire class, but you muted me. <laughs> Asshole professor. Wow. Because <laughs> I muted her. Yeah. I was muting everyone. She called you out. You All right, you know face. what? Shots fired. I accept. <laughs> but I mean, Morgan, you probably should have you know muted me, but you did. What the units are? We'll play the game, I'll take <laughs> Piper, come here, baby. Come here, honey. I know you don't like. You don't like the noise. So oh, nice. really? Um, oh, look at that little pooch. I can love her so much. She's afraid of the thunder. Oh, what a little baby, huh? And they're getting differing responses from London where the gall Oh, I got 93. Okay. What are the units, guys? It is pouring out there. <laughs> Solar masses. Thank you. Now. Um, they had a couple of follow-up questions, right? Wait, so why is it solar masses? <laughs> oh, Morgan, because this is solar masses here. Because if you wanted, Morgan, you could put in 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, but why bother getting the mass in kilograms? It's much cooler to have the mass in terms of how many times the mass of the sun it is. Like, I want to know how many stellar masses worth of material do I need to collapse to make this star? That's more interesting to me than some stupid number of kilograms. Hmm. Did that answer your question, Morgan? Yeah, he's a bad guy. I mean, sure. look at it this way, Morgan. You do this, you multiply by eight. Oh, I think I know what Morgan's saying. Morgan, <laughs> That's what I mean. this is a magic formula. It's not an MKS formula. Um. They've cooked the books so it'll work for you. Now, I could walk you through how they did that, but I suspect everyone would get tired pretty quickly. Anyways, what are the uh, questions, Riker? Uh, so how does that mass compare with the sun's mass, which we just answered? It's 93 yeah, times. 90 times. Uh, what is the estimated lifetime of a star with that mass? To get the estimated lifetime, we need to go to the HR diagram. Let's share screen for a second. Oh, whoops. Where would 93 solar masses be on this diagram? Notice that you can see the masses of stars printed in, uh, what yeah, would you it's say? it's like off the chart. 
Yeah, it's kind of up here. So it's it's probably less than ten to the how many how many years is ten to the seven? Uh, many. Hang no. On. I mean, I'm correct. That's a million. But, you know. No, a million is ten to the six. No, that's ten million. Ten million. Ten million. Ten million. Ten million. That's good. Okay. So the estimated lifetime would be your baby's less I know you're scared than 10 million years Riker thanks I really needed that I'm, I'm pretty freaked out <laughs> yeah no I'm worried about the dog in my lap yeah <laughs> is she having a, is it a he or a she 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 gets a little jitter. My brother's dog is afraid of thunder. Yeah, she she shakes. She does not like the thunder at all. Wow, that's amazing. That my two big dogs are curled up at my feet, terrified of the thunder. <laughs> I love it. I want to see some giant lightning bolts shoot across the sky. I want some real apocalypse here. This is what I was promised as a child of the eighties. Uh, less I'm than future. Estimated lifetime is less than less than ten million years. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got, what do we have, one last one to do? Yeah, give me one second so I can finish typing that. You got it, boss. You have a brother? Yeah, my brother Ben. He's great. He works for a science kit company, and we play in a band together. <laughs> oh, shit. What do y'all play? Synthesizer music, like kind of like 80s pop synth music. Yeah, I got the impression from your video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. me, and all, me and all my friends are synth nerds. I have a studio full of... Yeah, I was you know why synthesizers are so You're cool? Synthesizers are a place where science and music come together. Like you've abandoned the organic instruments and you're just playing the electronic waveform itself. It couldn't your band's called like Triangle Forest, right? Triangle Forest, yeah. Well, I want to yeah. do... I want to do during the quarantine here, I want to do a live concert from our studio and put it on Zoom. That'd be awesome. Well, well if you need a random saxophonist, I got you. Oh, really? I actually have a MIDI <laughs> saxophone, a little uh, Casio saxophone that can plug into a synthesizer. It would blow your mind. Oh, that's wild. That's what you call a good taste in music. <laughs> I think so, but then again, I'm me, so I'm predisposed to like myself. Uh, oh, I'm going to open up the <coughs> window. Because I want to hear some of this rain, and then I'll uh, we'll get up. Sorry, I just wanted a front row seat to all these raindrops. <laughs> <coughs> okay, Riker, are you ready to move on? Yeah. So, it's number 56, internal temperature of the sun. All right. Is this the last question? Or is there one more? This is the last one. Yep, last one. My man. Is this a long question? Uh, it's got three parts. Yeah, longer uh, than you'd want. <laughs> Hold on. Did you say 56? Okay, hit me. The sun is essentially a gas cloud in which the forces of pressure and gravity balance each other. We can therefore use the equation in Mathematical Insight 16.1 to estimate the interior temperature of the sun from its mass and particle density. Uh, what is the average number density of particles within the sun, given that the average mass per particle is about 10 to the negative 24 grams. Hint, the volume of a sphere of radius r is equal to 4 pi r cubed over 3. All right, let me help translate this. Thank We're you. trying to find the number density of the gas. Now, they gave us the mass of a single hydrogen atom, right? What was it? Uh, 10 to the negative 24 grams. Okay, we also know the mass of the sun. Oh my God, the rain is so loud. The rain is so loud, it's awesome. It uh, the just mass of the sun either. is two times 10 to the 30. Oh, it stopped raining over here. Yeah. 
Let's just go with two times 10 to the 33 grams. Here's my concept of how we're going to get the number density. The number density is the number of atoms divided by the volume of the cloud. So let's first focus on getting the number of atoms in the cloud. OK? So here we go. The number of atoms will be the mass, sorry, the mass of the star, the mass of the sun, divided by the mass of a single grain. Or 2 times 10 to the 33 grams divided by 10 to the minus 24 grams. What does that equal? I heard that. Oh. <laughs> Do you see any lightning? No. No. I saw some a little bit ago. Oh, cool. Should it stopped raining. Yeah, rain's like slowing down here. Rain yeah, stopped for me. Like down. Hello. In Providence, in downtown, it's still raining hard. <laughs> Should be two uh, times ten to the fifty-seven. Like yeah, we can figure that out just by thirty fifty-seven. Okay, now the radius of the sun, the sun's radius is 700,000 kilometers or seven times 10 to the eight meters. I'm going to skip some moments here or seven times 10 to the 10 centimeters. So the number density should be the number of atoms, two times 10 to the 57 atoms, divided by 4 thirds pi times seven times 10 to the 10 centimeters cubed. Can I recommend that we flip the three up to the top? So three. Yes, you can recommend it. Times two times 10 to the 57 over four times pi times seven times 10 to the 10 centimeters cubed. Punch that up. Man, the raccoon is going to be so soggy today. I should go give him some, some chicken bits or something. He's, when it rains, something the warm. gets full and the raccoon gets real soggy. Very soggy. Soggy raccoons. 1.4 times 1024. Uh, Morgan says 1.4 times 10 to the 24. Can someone else co co corroborate that? That's what I got. Okay. What are the units? Units? Adam? It's particles. Particles per centimeters. Yeah. Squared. Cubed. Yeah. Volume. Why? Part A. I'll let you guys catch up to me.
How many parts are in this one? Uh, there are three parts. Three. Uh, I feel you, buddy. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> All right, we ready? Mm -hmm. What's that chat say? Fucking rebel, okay. Um, you ready to go? Yep. I forgot, this one's kind of a whopper too, but whatever, we got it. We're almost done. Riker part B. What is the approximate temperature necessary for gas pressure to balance gravity within the sun, given the average particle density from part A? Okay, here we are going to use the genes mass formula again. The genes mass has the condition for where gravity balances the central temperatures and pressures of the cloud. To be in balance, the genes mass is going to be equal to 18 times the mass of the sun times the square root of temperature cubed divided by number density. You guys can see what we're gonna plug in for the genes mass, right? What do we plug in for the genes mass? This is a conceptual point. Oh, we're gonna plug in N. Tar pardon? We're gonna plug in N. No, N goes over here. From A, from part A. We're gonna solve, no, N goes there, we're going to solve for T, but what are we going to put in for the genes? Uh, 95 solar masses. No, that was the previous problem. We're trying to find the central temperature of the sun, not of that weird gas cloud. One. Um, one solar one mass. One solar mass, right. Watch my algebra here. One solar mass equal to 18 solar masses times the square root of T cubed over N. Solar masses cancel out. 1 18th is the square root of T cubed over N. Therefore, 1 18th squared is T cubed over N. Therefore, T cubed is n times 1 over 18 squared or temperature is the cubed root of the number density divided by 18 squared. How about that algebra? Bet you liked that a whole bunch. I bet that just tickled you fancy. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's plug in our number density. This is too smart for my liking. <laughs> T is the cubed root of, uh, what was the number density? 1.4? 1.4 times 10 to the 24 particles per cubic centimeter. Let me show you an old physics trick. If you don't feel like writing particles per cubic centimeter, you just write centimeters to the minus three. Particles are a dummy unit, so that's one over centimeters cubed. And that's divided by 18 squared. Do that and then do the cube root afterwards. Two sig figs will suffice. Someone watching YouTube? Someone watching Valorant. <laughs> 60 million? Yeah. Who said that? Was that Sal? Uh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Sorry. Mike. Um, oh, yeah, Mike. We never get to hear from you because I never see your face. 
Sorry, I just kind of come in and out and chime in. That's okay. <laughs> Mike, I'm glad you're here with us. And yes, thank you. 16 million is exactly what I wanted to hear. Now, Mike, I want to keep talking to you for a second. 16 million what? Tell them. Box it, but we have to keep talking here. Mike, that number is not random, or it's not entirely random. No, wrong. Why is that number interesting? I can't hear. Yeah, can you uh, move it down a little bit? What? Um, yeah. Can you guys see okay? Yep. Is that all for me? Well, yeah, but we got to talk. I think there's a part C and stuff. And Mike, Mike, Wait. you and I aren't done yet. <laughs> okay. Is that, is that they're saying it's the temperature necessary to, to achieve equilibrium? Ne necessary to achieve what? Hydrostatic equilibrium within the sun? Uh, yes, in some ways, Mike, but there's another dimension to this. Yes, that's the temperature necessary to keep hydrostatic equilibrium. You've got that part down. But the answer we got is kind of interesting if you consider our last couple of lectures. Why is that number so fascinating? Why is that so... Like, it didn't turn out to be 10 Kelvin. It turned out to be 16 million Kelvin. Why do you find that interesting? Or why would I find that interesting? I think we're gassing him up too much, all right? If I had an AK, I would have won half the bro. It doesn't matter. I'm not sure. Wait, whoever's watching a YouTube video about AK-47s, just mute yourself, because we've got one last point to make. Mike, you can't, you can't figure it out? Um... Does anyone, else, does anyone know what I'm talking about, or have I lost all of you? I'm lost. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Sorry, the outside world was just distracting me. Listen, can you think of another number associated with the center of the sun that is really fucking similar to this number? Something from your sun lecture. The temperature of hydrogen fusion. Booyah, Anakin. And what's that temperature? Anakin to the rescue. 15 million. Kelvin. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting, right? Where are you, Anakin? I'm, I'm scrolling through my faces looking for you. Why, why is it interesting that it came out to be 16 million? I can't find you. Oh, there you are. You're at the end. So you understand me, I guess, but why is it interesting that it came out to be 16 million Kelvin? Like as opposed to 15 million or as opposed to something completely else? Yeah, I, my question's a little open-ended. I guess Mike had the first part of this. Mike said, this temperature is necessary to maintain hydrostatic equilibrium. In other words, if you have a ball and that ball is the same mass as the sun, its natural gravity equilibrium point will force the central gas temperature to become 16 million Kelvin. But as you're mentioning, that's just over the threshold for nuclear fusion. So I guess like my point is just, it's interesting that you can prove that merely to be in hydrostatic equilibrium, the sun will automatically generate a temperature which is not just sufficient, but slightly over what's minimum necessary for fusion, right? So I guess the only point I was trying to make is, it's cute to figure out that just by arguing that your star, there you are, Mike, just by arguing that your star has to be in hydrostatic equilibrium, it guarantees the minimum temperature needed for fusion. I think that's kind of cool. Like, it, it makes some kind of wacky sense. Does that mean our sun's pretty fucking powerful? <laughs> our sun is extremely powerful, yes. Yeah. 
although there are stars that are more powerful, as you will discover, but it certainly does. It means that, that once you get a ball of 10 to the power of 57 hydrogen atoms, their gargantuan mass will smush themselves into a state where they have to ignite fusion. That means the universe is violent and weird. And this is why the stars twinkle at night. And I like that kind of shit. That's why I went into this, okay? All right, so uh, Riker, why don't you read us part three and we'll put this puppy to bed. How does your estimate compare with the internal core temperature of the sun? So I think the point they were trying to make was the point that we just made, which is at 16 million Kelvin, this temperature is just over the 15 million Kelvin uh, needed for hydrogen fusion. Now, there's two ways in which they could have meant the answer to this question. And I'm not sure, because it's been so long since I've studied this stuff, I'm not even sure how we know that it's 15 billion Kelvin. I, I don't know if that's a correction, because we did a pretty simplified calculation here. But I would expect, students, that because there are stars that have less mass than the sun that can still fuse, like a spectral type K or M star are significantly less massive than the sun, and they can still reach fusion temperatures. I bet the actual minimum temperature for fusion is a little bit under 15 million Kelvin. It's probably like 11 million or 12 million Kelvin. And so basically the sun is, the bare minimum requirement for fusions would be a spectral type M star that have masses of one tenth of the suns. Anything above one tenth of the sun, you can get to fusion temperature. So I, I think this is kind of the general idea and that's all you need to put for part C. And hell, that means we're done, right? <laughs> that, was, that was no joke, students. That was a whopper of a homework. I knew it was gonna be. But we also learned a lot and we did some crazy math. And what else are you gonna do during COVID-19? Um, <clears throat> oh, it's raining again. Cool. Yeah, did it for uh, a let's minute. go. Has everyone sufficiently copied this so that I can go into gallery view? Yeah. Well, okay. I did. Uh, any any people dragging behind here? It yep. looks like everyone's pretty good. All right. Let's go to uh wait, I want to go to Reese Dice exit. Uh, uh, is this homework eight? This is this homework, homework eight. That's right. So how are we all doing there? That was an adventure. Great. Just getting my pictures together. That's now, am I, able to, am I able to submit multiple photos of my work to the uh, Yes, you should be able yeah. to. Yeah, there should be a little, um, I don't know how you're doing it, but I usually submit it from my either phone or my computer. You know what? If you go in, oh. Oh. Yeah, because I'm usually scanning it. I usually scan it to, to my computer and then upload it like that. But I might just take photos because it's easier. Hey, photos maybe, are definitely easier. Maybe I could do a share screen and show you guys what it looks like on my end. I graded all the papers last night, so I don't know if anybody's still up there. But let's go to my Blackboard, and let's go to my Grade Center, and let's go to Needs Grading. So you'll notice that I've got a few people who submitted stuff today. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? Hey, it's Marcus. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I want you guys to I want you guys to see what it looks like from my end. Let's look at these four people here for binary star orbits. If I choose grade all users, all right, that's lame. I hate it when I just see the JPEGs, but at least I can click on it and I can see it and I can get back. Uh, oops, it's actually quite irritating. You know what I really like? I like when students have it displayed in the box. Now I don't know what you guys are doing because there's so many of you. Well, let's go yeah, to this next know what um, I'm Here's Hunter. Now, Hunter does it right. Look, yeah. when I click on Hunter's, it just comes up as an image. And then I can <laughs> type in and I can be done with it. So Hunter's killing it. That last person was okay, but what I don't want to see is a file that I can't even open. So here's Marcus. Now, look, if it displays in the box, then I can probably read it. That's awesome. That's what I want to see, okay? Um, so if you could, I don't know why sometimes it looks like this for you guys. And other times it looks like uh, why does sometimes like like Raph, 
I don't understand why it came in as a hyperlink. That's weird. And that's slightly more irritating. But I can still handle this because I can click on the image. When I see a .heic file or a zip file, it tries to take me out of Blackboard and I can't look at them. So that's not OK. So I just wanted to show that to you so that you can see when you're doing it right, the little box should display whatever your submission is. That's when it's, that helps me grade faster and then I can get back to living my life, okay? I just, I just sent mine, yeah. Oh, you just sent yours in, John? No. Let's see what- Let's look at it. All right, same here. Same here. All right, let's see here. So share screen. Uh, let's see, go to grading center. Needs grading. Uh, I'm sorry, Jonathan, was that you? Yeah. All right, let's look at your chapter 16 and see what it looks like. Grade all users. Blackboard's really, all right, so John, I can already tell it's gonna be good. Look, it displays right in the picture. That rules. That okay? ain't mine, that uh, ain't mine. That, mine. Nice, <laughs> that ain't mine. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Marcus's. Sorry. Good job, Marcus. Good job. <laughs> oh, there's Jonathan, let's see what's up. Yeah, just take pictures. I can already tell it's going to work. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. To a Word document. That's like, right. I submitted mine as well. That's cool. All right. So anyways, I thought maybe if I showed you what it looked like on my end, that would help you guys know what it should be looking like on your end. I'm assuming you've had no problems with mine. No, I don't think so. I, don't, I can't remember everyone's that carefully, but I, like, I'm just trying to make sure that we can get into a good system. You know how I'm trying to make it easy for you guys? It would be yeah. cool to make it easy for me, too. Then we all help each other out. Well, I had a great Thursday with you guys. Thursday is the new Friday. Woo! Okay. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are not going too insane, cooped up in your houses. Go for oh, it. I'm good. No, I'm already there. Insane? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I already knew that. Put your rain boots on, you can. Uh, anyways, maybe not today, but go for a walk from time to time so that you don't go totally insane. Go out to the woods and look at nature. And, uh, you know, keep turning in your work. You guys having good luck with your other classes? Are they going okay? Uh, so this good. is probably the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I've been, I've been doing it right. I've been having a lot. Honestly, I've had a ton of fun with this online stuff. There's some cool dimensions to it. But um, I know that some students have had a, uh, a rough go with, with other classes. I mean, I think I think math teachers give something up. to doing it live. You know, if, if you just kind of lecture to a camera, it's not the same. Like talking to people, that's part of the whole magic. Looking at Michael's little magnet toy, that's, that's, that adds some richness to our lives, okay? This so, is the only class I even have a lecture for anymore. Same. Class. Really? Same big league too. Yeah. See, that's sad. I think it's, uh, I think it's yeah. so important to do that, you know? Like you learn by talking to other people. It's, that's how this... That's oh, how I'm learn. learning nothing. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> all right well um i guess hold on a second i'm gonna remember to save the chat for whatever it's worth i don't think it's worth anything yeah <laughs> you guys chat less than the cat crew um well and, last time i chatted too much and i kind of lost my mind you lost yourself that's what we like you always you always chat a little too much but that's what we like about you all right i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this recording so that i have it